Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Namaste. Very happy to meet you once again. I hope good number of students have joined this live interaction session. So I cannot see your faces, but I can see your queries. A few of the students have already asked the queries in offline mode. So I will start with those queries. One query which was most common and in the minds of many of you is related to assignment. Keep in mind that these assignments are basically to encourage you to prepare. Of them I had kept two assignments which were very much hands on. Assignment 1 and Assignment 5. The main purpose of that assignment is to make you download and read the annual report and that process itself will be a great learning process for you. So don't worry about what answers you are given. We are going to assess them manually. But what is important is you have gone through the annual report, actually seen p &L balance sheet and have tried to answer as much as you can answer fine so don't worry about the marks for assignment this marks assigning process is automatic and the marks will be assigned to you a few of you could not submit assignment on time but as per swayam rules assignments cannot be submitted late but we consider the best of best four of all the assignments submitted so don't worry if you have delayed a bit i would recommend that especially assignment number one and five you should do it for your own practice even if you have not submitted don't worry about it go through the annual report and try to do it because it will be a good learning process for you fine Okay, now the second query, second most important query was about the examination. So many of you are curious as to the pattern of exam, in what way they have to prepare, etc. So I think you are all aware that we are going to have a completely objective type of question. So there will be four options or five options and you have to choose the best option so it's a hundred mark exam it has got 50 questions of two marks each fine now the questions are meant to test all type of knowledge from you so there are some questions which are based on the concepts or on theory so for example history of accounting for example accounting standards for example understanding of various assets and liabilities there are various questions to test your conceptual and theoretical understanding there will be four or five options and you have to choose the option now as far as the cases are concerned that trace your practical ability to prepare a balance sheet or a PNL or a cash flow statement and so on. We also have practical questions. So there will be balances given and you are required to make a PNL account. There will be balances given and you are required to make a balance sheet. Those types of questions also will be asked. But when there is a paper and pen exam, you have to write the answer and submit 
here we cannot accept your written submission so what we will do is you will be asked to prepare a pnl or balance sheet and you have to answer it in the form of a objective question so suppose you prepare a balance sheet there will be various questions like for example what is the owners fund of the company so if you have made balance sheet correctly you will be able to take the total of items of owners funds and then choose the four options then there will be question like what is a current how much are the total current assets how much are total current liabilities so from that balance sheet pick up the figures and choose the most correct answer and respond same thing for pnl as far as the cash flow is concerned you are aware that two years balance sheet is given you have to find the difference that difference figures will also be given then you have to identify a particular difference as one of the types of cash flows i hope you remember the three types it can be operating it can be investing it can be financing some of the items like say bank balance or short term securities could be categorized as cash and cash equivalent in which case you will have to mark it as c we have done it in the class there could be also some irrelevant items which should not be there in the cash flow at all then you will have to mark as na or dash then based on that prepare a cash flow statement and we will ask in a form of a objective question as to what is the total of operating cash flows what is the total of cash flow from investment what is the total of cash flows from financing and so on got it so basically you there will be cases where you will have to prepare some statement or there will be cases on ratio analysis where you will have to prepare ratios prepare balance sheet calculate ratios and based on ratios respond to the question as to say what is a debt equity ratio then choose the four items i mean look at the four items choose the best item from that or there might be a question like is the liquidity position improving now calculate current ratio see if the current ratio shows an improvement over 2 years 3 years 4 years period whatever is given and then according to respond accordingly respond again for response is in a objective question type so i hope you are getting it this will be a typical way the questions will be asked look at our syllabus whatever topics which are covered in our syllabus questions will be only based on that so important part is balance sheet pnl cash flow ratios then there are few analytical ways of preparing the statements like comparative common size statement or few questions on depreciation or inventory or on say history of accounting or corporate governance exactly look at each module discussed by us in the class and based on that only the questions will be asked fine so i hope your queries related to questions are also somewhat dealt with i am having a look at your current questions okay there is one question from lohit kumar jain that it is given that questions can be multiple types fill in the blank or essay type that is true as far as swayam is concerned but as far as financial accounting is co course is concerned all our questions will be only multiple choice questions of course you will have to solve the case come to a solution and based on that try to respond to multiple choice questions fine
okay uh, i was having a look at some of your questions now the question says that for preparation of balance sheet will the pen and paper be provided so you can make it on computer in a excel sheet or in case swayam allows you to make use of paper as rough sheets you can use them but the final answer is to be given on computer by choosing a b c d Uh, there is a question whether exam center will provide paper and pen i am not very sure i'll just check maithe ka exam madhe paper and pen detat par pen and pen okay they will be providing you rough pages and pen so you can do rough calculations there will be a calculator in your system so you can use the calculator final answer will be by choosing the best question there is no essay type or a theoretical question there will be conceptual questions but in the form of objective questions only uh, right now you might not have got assignment 1 and 5 marks but they are to be assessed manually we will soon upload them don't worry about the marks i'll take some of the questions which are earlier asked there was one question about comparative statement if you remember in comparative statement we take two years data suppose 2018 and 19 then find the difference let us say opening that is first year figure is 10000 2018 figure 2019 figure is 12000 then difference is 2000 and then we find 2000 as a percentage of 10000 and write there as 20% now this is possible when both the figures are positive suppose the first figure is negative next figure is positive or first figure is positive next figure is negative or first figure is zero next figure has some value in such cases only fill up the difference okay so 2018 19 third column is difference fourth column is percentage if the signs are negative positive or one of the figures is zero then don't calculate any percentage in the fourth column just calculate the difference and that much is enough okay there was one question what is the difference between shareholders equity and net worth very simple question which we had dealt in the class i hope many of you know the answer so the answer is shareholders funds is equal to equity they are synonyms and that is equal to net worth so net worth is more an indian terminology equity is more an american terminology shareholders funds is also used many times sometimes it's called as a shareholders equity sometimes it's called as owners equity sometimes it's called as just equity all of them has same meaning they are exactly synonyms of each other there was one question as to how is wip calculated so work in progress refers to inventory which is semi processed so you have got raw material you know the cost price you will have finished goods again you can calculate cost if there are goods in between that is they are being processed but not yet ready in such scenario a technical estimate is done 
using a valuer or an engineer who certifies that this particular product is 70% ready and then estimated cost is arrived at and that cost is given to us as financial accountants we take that cost in the balance sheet same way you can also have capital WIP that is capital work in progress like building under construction or road under construction their values are also arrived as a basis of estimate and then they are written under fixed assets okay there was one question as to how to attend previous classes uh, it may not be possible for you to attend the classes but the videos are available you can view those videos fine now i'll try to take the current questions if there are any questions in this session i am just having a look at your questions Uh, as far as the weightage is concerned, 100 marks is a total weightage, 25 is for assignment, 75 is for question paper. But you will have a question paper for 100 marks. Whatever marks you get will be then weighted down to 75 marks. There are a few items in some of the cases, for example, say unquoted investment, FOB value of export, these figures are not required to be written in the balance sheet. So there would be some extra items which may not be relevant, you should not write them in the balance sheet or say if you have got some unwanted information like you are making a PL account but they give you some value of current asset it is not required in the PL, then you ignore it if you are given a balance sheet but some PL figure like say revenue is given it should be ignored that is also a learning for you that is a testing for you of your knowledge that whether you take an unwanted item so you have to write, write down a right item at a right place if there is an unwanted item exclude it don't write them in the statement both will be tested uh, once again many are asking what is a pattern for 100 marks etc i think i have told you the pattern you will have 50 questions of 2 marks each. All questions are objective, multiple choice questions. In that there will be variety of questions like cases, theory and so on. But all of them are to be answered as a objective multiple choice question. Fine. So that is a pattern of our paper. Are there any other queries? Uh, there is one question which is asked by Santosh Kumar that is about investment in mutual fund do you remember how do you define investment we have discussed in the class that any money which is put outside our business will be called as an investment so what are the examples say investment in mutual fund investment in banks like fixed deposit investment in shares of other company all these are shown under investments but in balance sheet 
we have got an item like non current investment okay so under nca that is non current asset there is a subheading called non current investment what is the definition of non current any item which is intended to be held for more than one year is considered as non current so we will take an investment let us say fixed deposit for 2 years and then we will treat it as a non current investment now suppose investment in mutual fund is being made only for 3 months it's a fixed maturity plan and has a life only of 3 months then where will you categorize it will you categorize it as non current investment i think most of you know the answer answer is no because this is an investment only for 3 months so we will categorize it as current asset for that matter any asset which is intended to be held for less than 1 year it is treated as a current asset so we will not put it under nca as non current investment we will treat it as a ca under current assets you can have a sub item like current investment but as far as our class is concerned we are not worried about the subheadings what is important is you categorize it as a current asset if this 3 months information is not available it just says investment in mutual fund then we have no way to know whether it is long term or short term but normally if it just says investment we will assume it as a non current investment if it says that it is a short term investment or if it says that investment for a short period then we will assume that it is for less than one year and then we will show it as a current asset fine there is one good question what is a gross block now under fixed assets many times these words are used gross block and net block gross block refers to fixed asset at cost so suppose you purchase machinery for 1 lakh then gross block will be 1 lakh let us say depreciation is 20% per annum so in year 1 depreciation will be 20000 year 2 depreciation will be 20 plus 20 that is 40 year 3 accumulated depreciation will be 20 20 20 60 but in the balance sheet all the three years we will show gross block as 1 lakh in year 1 we will say gross block 1 lakh less accumulated depreciation 20000 so net block 80000 net block means asset at return down value or you can say asset at cost minus depreciation is called as net block so in year 1 we will say 1 lakh minus 20 so net block is 80 in year 2 again gross block 1 lakh less accumulated depreciation 40 net block 60 in year 3 gross block 1 lakh less accumulated depreciation 60 net block 40 i hope i am clear
Okay, there is one question by Abhijit Mahale about what are quick assets. So I would like class itself to respond that is cash a quick asset? I think most of you know yes, answer is yes. Because cash is in a highly liquid form we call it a quick asset. Suppose you hold investment in bank deposit for two months. Will you treat it as a quick asset? I think again the answer is yes. Because it can be, it can be easily converted into cash. Again it is a quick asset. Now will you treat receivables as quick asset? Answer is again yes. Because mostly receivables are collected in 15 days or one month or two months, then it can be considered as a quick asset. If it is specifically given that these receivables are long overdue or they cannot be collected in say two to three months, then we will treat it as non-quick. But normally by default, receivables are considered as quick assets now will you treat inventory as quick or non quick answer is normally inventory is treated as a non quick asset because inventory might consist of raw material which you have to convert into finished goods then find a customer sell it then it is converted into receivables and after that you receive money after some time. So it takes long time to convert inventory into cash. Even if inventory is of finished goods, normally it is difficult to sell it. Market conditions can keep on changing. So by default inventory is treated as a non-quick asset. If in a special case it is given that inventory is a fast moving item, can be sold immediately without any difficulty, then you can treat inventory as a quick asset. For example, in petrol pumps, inventory consists of petrol. Petrol comes every day and is sold out every day without much problem. There is no problem of finding customers. Customers themselves come to petrol pump. They want petrol so they pay money and buy it. So in that case inventory can be treated as a quick asset. But normally in most of the companies. First of all whether there is a demand or no. Then whether customers are willing to buy from us or no. All these questions exist. So inventory is taken as a non quick asset. Continuing that question. Uh, Abhijit says that in companies like auto industry, most of the companies don't give credit. Then no problem. If they don't give credit, they won't have any receivables. If they have receivables, it is good to treat it as quick asset because it can be quickly converted into cash. Got it? Okay, Hari Prasad has asked investment in mutual fund comes under which activity in cash flow? I think in the question itself the answer is there. We are having three types of activities. One is operating, second is investing, third is financing. Now since it's an investment, by default we will treat it as which type of activity it will be treated as an investing activity. A few exceptions will be there. If it is a short term investment, we can treat it as since it's a short term investment is a current asset, we can treat it within operating activities. And if it is ultra short, 
that is it can be converted in less than 48 hours with a known value like investment in government securities or investment in treasury bills then with some exceptions but i mean with subject to certain conditions we can treat it as a cash equivalent then it will not come it come under any activity one more issue you should keep in mind that all rules which we are talking about are for manufacturing and service companies these are not true for banking and investment companies because for banking finance and investment companies all investments interest everything is a act operating activity for them in for them investment in mutual fund will also be a operating activity but by default for most of the companies such investment should be investing activities Uh, there is one question about interest received and interest paid in a cash flow statement we have discussed it in a class but i would again repeat it for the benefit of everyone you all know that basically we receive interest when we make investment so interest received it's considered as a investing item same way when we raise money from others like we take loan or we issue debentures we pay them interest so when we receive finance or we raise funds we pay interest so interest paid is taken as a financing activity fine now again both these is for long term sometimes if interest received and interest paid is on a current asset then treat it as a operating activity or in a banking company all interest is treated as a operating activity but that is more an exception as a normal rule interest received is operating interest paid is financing get it getting it then there is one question from asid how to calculate current ratio i think we have discussed it in a class please look at the ratios the formula is current assets upon current current assets upon current liabilities i hope you are getting it then hari prasad has one more question what is application of funds see application means use of funds in the old format of balance sheet companies instead of assets can say application of funds and under that they would write fixed assets etc so application of funds means how you have used your funds which if it is one side of a balance sheet it shows asset side of the balance sheet okay there is a one question from shivani priya what is a foreign ownership if you go to balance sheet they would give the ownership related data that means in their shareholders how many are promoter shareholders shareholding how much are retail shareholders 
how much are institutional shareholders like banks and how much are foreign shareholders in that again you can have FDI shareholding or FII shareholding so details are given in the annual report just go through the details and you will get the answer to your question uh, some have reported that they are not getting PDF of annual report I am sorry this is not true for any listed company just search the name in Google you will get the annual report in PDF either you can get from the company website or you can get from moneycontrol.com or from the stock exchange website please do a good search you will get all information about the company including their annual report there is one question from priya how to calculate working capital now working capital refers to funds which are used on a day to day basis by the company from the balance sheet you can calculate working capital as current asset minus current liability okay Mega has asked how to calculate total non-current assets. Now first you have to prepare a balance sheet. Look at the format. Non-current assets include fixed assets. So make listing of all fixed assets. Then may like tangible, intangible, work in progress, fix, uh, capital work in progress etc. That total will be total fixed assets then calculate the total of non-current investments and the total of uh, fixed assets non-current investment or any other non-current asset that total if you make you will come to know how much is a total of nca or non-current asset okay there is a question that how do you treat fixed asset as source of fund we don't treat fixed asset as source of fund in the balance sheet there are two sides one side is liability the other side is asset that liability in the old format sometimes used to be called as a source of fund that means how you have raised funds so it includes shareholders funds non-current liabilities that is called as a source of fund the other side is a asset side that sometimes is called as a application of fund so it includes fixed assets non-current investments or working capital and so on fine There is one question about deferred tax credit. There is nothing like deferred tax credit actually. Under the profit and loss account, you have an item called tax expense, which has two subheadings current tax, deferred tax. What do you mean by deferred tax? That means this is a tax which is payable on income of the current year but instead of this year its payment is to be made after two three years not in the this year if it is paid in the this year then it will be called as current tax what tax is for this year but is paid after 
टू इयर्स थ्री इयर्स फोर इयर्स इज कन्सिडर्ड एज अ डिफर्ड टैक्स सो इन पी एंड एल अकाउंट देर इज अ आइटम कॉल्ड डिफर्ड टैक्स नैचरली यू वील हैव टू शो इट एज अ लायबिलिटी इन द बैलेंस शीट विल इट बी शोन एज अ नॉन करंट लायबिलिटी और एज अ करंट लायबिलिटी I think most of you know the answer. It will be shown as a non-current liability because it is going to be for more than one year. Sometimes the companies are in asset, are in losses, so they create what is known as non, what is known as deferred tax asset. Under non-current assets, you you can also see an item called as deferred tax asset. Okay. now that deferred tax asset whenever you have got profit instead of paying tax that deferred tax asset can be used to reduce your tax okay there is one question about interest received and paid in operating activities i have just told you that in cash flow statement interest received is an investing activity and interest paid is a financing activity very rarely they come as operating activity only if interest received and paid is on current assets or we are making a cash flow for a banking company but normally it is not going to come in the operating cash flow okay one question is what is interest income i think you should know it in the pnl account there is a item called as other income that includes interest income so if i make investment in fixed deposit or if i keep my money in the debentures of some company they will give me interest that will be considered as a interest income for me there is one question how to do gst returns as far as our current course is concerned this is only an accounting course so any indirect tax like gst or a custom is added in the respective item so suppose you have purchased raw material customs duty on that raw material is added to the cost of raw material or gst is also added to the cost of raw material filing of gst return in itself is a different topic so i will not be able to cover in this class i think a lot of online tutorials are available please check this tutorial there was also one question about technical analysis and fundamental analysis that is also a question related to portfolio management it is a very different and a very deep topic so i am sorry i will not be able to cover it now please register for a course on portfolio management or there can also be a separate course on technical analysis there you will get answers to your questions there is one question by hari prasad whether prior period items are considered in cash flow answer is yes if there is any mistake in the earlier period it will be rectified but it will be required to be shown with a separate note most of the questions are over our time is also over uh, is there any other question or you want me to say any other thing
I would like to once again remind you about the objective of our course. Our course was mainly meant to introduce you to financial accounting. Keep in mind that it's a very large topic, will require at least 100 hours to study. We have only a 20 hour course. So in this what we have done is, our main focus was students who don't have much exposure to accounting so we have discussed about balance sheet pnl and cash flow that if balances are given how to prepare them so our focus was mainly on the third step in accounting the first step is recording of transactions we have not gone much into details of it summarizing is a second step that again we have not done much Third step is presentation of financial statements. Now for everybody, whether you are accountant or no, whether you are an engineer, whether you are a student of any discipline, it is good for you to understand financial statements. So in the course, we have tried to understand various financial statements. We have also seen how to prepare cash flow how to do analysis like comparative common size and how to calculate various ratios and how to interpret them a very basic level uh, interpretation so main objective was to introduce you to accounting i hope that objective is served now you use this knowledge try to study balance sheet and pnl of various companies all these balance sheet are available freely downloadable you download them, read them, so that whenever you need to study any company, you can understand those terms, concepts, terminologies and always be live in the discussion forum. If you have any queries, you can always raise there. Peer-to-peer -peer learning will also be useful. So be in touch with colleagues in your class. They can also solve many of your queries and keep discussing that will enhance your knowledge never be shy of asking any question even if you feel it's a stupid question you ask it because the whole group will be benefiting and also respond to other person's questions there is one question by Hari Prasad that whenever a mutual fund investment is purchased or redeemed what amount should be recorded in cash flow as you all know cash flow statement is basically about flow of cash so the actual investment is to be recorded and when you sell not the profit or loss but the value sale value is to be recorded I think Guru Vignesh is once again asking about the pattern of exam. We have discussed it two, three times, but once again, I will tell it is purely objective question. Go through your PPTs carefully. Look at the videos again and again. We have discussed many concepts. You can also check Google or look at your annual reports so that various terms terminologies, financial figures, they would be understood by you. They can be asked in an objective question format. Then various cases will be asked like preparing balance sheet, preparing PNL, preparing cash flow, calculating ratios. But we will not ask you to submit in pen and paper. Solve it in pen and paper and then respond it in a form of an objective question. Okay. Abhijit has asked whether the questions will be asked on clause 49 of corporate governance. The answer is uh, there are several things in a law. We will not be able to ask 
and discuss everything what is discussed in our class or what is given in your assignment questions are based only on that mostly what is discussed in the class questions will be based on that or we have discussed many cases so look at those cases of course i'll not ask you same case it's a different case that will be asked but covering the similar concepts okay a few people in the comments had said that they are not able to understand hindi so in some of the videos certain terms are used in hindi because more than 70 80 crore indians are much better if you talk to them in hindi so if you are not able to understand it is good you try to learn hindi of course i have also used english term but it will be really good if you try to learn it as fast as possible because that's a very good way of communication and i also get several queries from students that please use more hindi so i have to do a balance i cannot only talk in english i have to do a balance between english and hindi okay Uh, as per the rules you are not allowed to carry your calculators but those computers where you give exams will have the facility of calculator so you can use the calculator in the computer and use the rough sheets to solve and then respond it in the uh, given format to the objective questions so scientific calculator will provide to them on the assignment to practice it हाँ बट दैट विल बी देयर ऑन द स्क्रीन ना साइंटिफिक कैलकुलेटर इज प्रोवाइडेड ऑन कोर्स पोर्टल दैट यू कैन यूज फॉर प्रैक्टिस अवर टाइम इज अप इज देयर एनी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच यू स्टिल वॉन्ट टू आस्क so i'll request everybody to keep in touch in the discussion forum don't only worry about the exam i know for student there is a anxiety about exam aapka exam ho jayega exam is not going to be very difficult but see to it that you understand those concepts because this is a very basic level course you are going to learn many more things this accounting course will help you to learn many other things in life so see to it that the concepts which are discussed here are well understood by you and i am sure you will also do very good in the exam fine so we'll stop here namaste best wishes to all of you